times over. Right now, fentanyl is being trafficked across our border, ripping through our communities and killing our children. As a new mother, this loss of life is unconscionable. Every day, we are losing more lives to fentanyl while House Democrats look the other way. Just last week, Speaker Pelosi and House Democrats showed they were not serious about combating this epidemic when they blocked our common sense legislation that would permanently classify fentanyl-related substances as a Schedule I drug. House Republicans are demanding Speaker Pelosi and House Democrats take immediate and permanent action to stop this crisis from worsening. This starts by securing our border and empowering our law enforcement officers by ensuring they have the tools they need to keep these lethal, lethal drugs off our streets. Today, I am joined by my colleagues in the House Republican Conference who serve on the Energy and Commerce Committee who will discuss this crisis, and I'm going to hand it over to Ranking Member Kathy McMorris-Rogers. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is Carson. The day after Thanksgiving, he purchased one pill off of Snapchat. One pill that a drug dealer had told him was Xanax to help with his anxiety. But it was laced with illicit fentanyl and it killed him instantly. Carson had his whole life in front of him. His mom is pleading for action and for justice. She's raising the alarm in my community about the dangers of fentanyl and the analogs that are surging across the southern border. In 10 days, the emergency scheduling for fentanyl analogs will expire, making these poisons street legal. We need a permanent solution, and that's why my colleagues, Bob Latta, Morgan Griffith, are leading on the HALT Fentanyl Act. It would permanently give law enforcement the tools that they need to seize these chemical weapons and help keep our communities safe. But last week, the Democrats blocked action on this and attached to the CR an extension until March 11th. Why? Because they want to exempt traffickers who move fentanyl-related substances from the mandatory minimum prison sentences. Traffickers who are poisoning young people like Carson. Molly asked me, how many more letters from grieving parents is it going to take? The fact is it shouldn't take another letter, another day. It shouldn't take another lost loved one. And it shouldn't take another temporary extension for fentanyl analogs. These substances are too deadly for Congress to be weak on traffickers and those who sell it to our children. We are urging the Democrats to join us, we need action, and we need action immediately to pass the Holt, the, the Holt Fentanyl Act. And at this time, I'd like to introduce my colleague on Energy and Commerce, Brett Guthrie. He's the, the lead Republican on the Health Subcommittee. Thank you very much, and, and thanks for everybody being here. I was just uh, at the El, Sac El Paso sector of the border and it, it struck me when, when we looked at illicit, looking at the illicit fentanyl issue and coming across our border. One, the Border Patrol agent said that it's coming from China. So you're going to tie several things together. It, it's coming from China, either in ingredients or just an illicit, illicit fentanyl. And then it's coming uh, across the, the border, mostly with migrants that are coming across the border. So I asked the Border Patrol officer, I said, well, what, what can we do to help you? What can Congress do? And he said, build the wall. They took me to a section... Um, it was actually in New Mexico, but it was in the, near El Paso. And it's where the, the wall was stopped on January 20th, 2021 from being built and where the old wall exists. And you could just see the difference. As a matter of fact, there was a section that had been removed to build the new wall. And when they stopped on January 20th because of the executive order, the Border Patrol agents actually had to fill in that wall because there was a big gap in the wall because they had taken the old wall down to build the new one and were ordered to stop building the new one. And, and, and the problem... They were telling me that was really a big issue with illicit fentanyl. One is just the, the migrants that are coming across, and a lot of it is the catch and release and not having to remain in Mexico anymore. And they said it's just numbers. One, uh, I, I don't want to. I know we're talking about fentanyl, but the abuse these migrants are being uh, going through with the cartels in Mexico is horrific. It's not compassionate to in, have policies that incentivize that kind of movement. But having said that, it. it they were showing pictures of, of cars that had cocaine, and some of you have seen them before, that they co co cocaine comes in bricks, and you'll see the front panel that missing out of the car. They take the door out of the car, and they try to sneak the, the drugs through a port of entry. They said illicit fentanyl you can carry in a water bottle. 
So if a migrant, how do they pay these five and six thousand dollar fees? Part of it is here's a bottle of fentanyl, and it's a numbers issue. So when there are hundreds and hundreds coming across, and they can only catch handfuls of them. The fentanyl's getting to the marketplace. So what's happening in the border matters, and it makes every state a border state and every community a border community. In Kentucky, in 2020, we don't have the numbers for 2021. Seventy percent of all uh, overdoses were illicit fentanyl. And so it, it is important what's happening at the border and not stopping at the border. And the border crisis moves it. And then it ties into the third thing, the, the Justice Democrats. A lot of us in my part of the world, when you watch TV, you say prosecutors in Cook County, Illinois, or Los Angeles, or New York not prosecuting. But the fact that it, it's in Washington, it's here in the House of Representatives, we can't permanently schedule fentanyl because of the mandatory minimums and the Justice Democrats don't want to add anything to the mandatory minimums. And I've always been open to justice reform, but if you're moving illicit fentanyl, you belong in jail because it's killing Kentuckians, it's killing Americans. And so um, we need to work together. We call on the Democrats to work with us to move this forward. It is, uh, it is it's inexcusable that illicit fentanyl. So think about if you're going to bring something across the border, you can try to package it in a big car, or you can put it in a water bottle, go through migrants coming across the border. It's it's easier to smuggle, it's cheaper, and it's not going to be illegal after February the 18th, maybe extended uh, to March the 11th, I think they're talking about, uh, instead of really handling this issue. So if they're going to catch you with this, and even if it, it doesn't disrupt your networks, so what are they going to smuggle? They're going to smuggle a drug that is that 70% of all overdoses in my state came from. And that's why we need to address it now. And next, I'd like to hand over to a good friend of mine who's a pharmacist and here in Congress, one of two, uh, my good friend, Buddy Carter. The first. Thank you. Yeah, the first. The first. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, and, and thank you, Elise, for putting this together. 100,000. 100,000 overdose deaths last year. Setting a record. Many of those overdose deaths were due to fentanyl. You know, we have moments of silence to honor those who have passed. Yet when it comes to the fentanyl that's coming across our border, then we are silent and we don't do anything. Or at least the Democrats don't do anything. And, and you've heard all the figures here of how it is infesting our communities. 100,000 deaths. Over 11,000 pounds of fentanyl seized at the border. That, that was what was seized. We don't know how much came across. The leading cause of death for those between 18 and 25. And, and folks, look, I practiced pharmacy for over 35 years. I, I was a retail pharmacist, your, your local neighborhood drugstore. Not a day went by when I didn't have a parent come in and bring a pill and say, can you identify this for me? I found it in my child's room. They got it at school. I need to know what it is. Two out of every five counterfeit pills now are laced with fentanyl. Now, when these people came in, when these parents came in to my pharmacy, I took it very seriously. I tried to console them. But I have to be quite honest with you. That changed. It changed after I went to the first funeral. After I went to the funeral of a young man who took a pill that someone gave him at school and overdosed. Folks, this is serious. We have got to control our borders. And, and, and you know, it frustrates me to no end when people think that, number one, this is just the problem at the border is just a problem with illegal immigration. No, it's a problem with the illegal drugs. It's a problem with fentanyl. Fentanyl is highly addictive. It's, it, it's highly, it, it's one of the strongest drugs out there. Just a, my, a minuscule amount of it can kill you. It's so much so until we have to tell our first responders to use gloves. You don't even want it to be absorbed into your skin. That's how potent it is. And yet, this administration continues to ignore the fact that drugs are flowing across that border. 
illegal drugs. And don't think for one moment, oh, that's a problem in Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, California. It doesn't impact me. These drugs are infesting every community in our country. Every community in our country. We're losing this battle, and we can win this battle. We can stop this. But we've got to control the border. This administration has got to understand that the health and safety of our children, of our country, is at stake here. This does not discriminate. When those parents came into my pharmacy, they were Democrats, they were Republicans, they were independents. It didn't matter. They were Americans, and they were being impacted by this. Please, Mr. President, please, Speaker Pelosi, do something about this. You have the ability to stop this. Let's stop it for the sake of our country, for the sake of our children. Thank you, and I'll yield back. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm now happy to go to questions. Kilmeny? Yeah. Madam Chair, thank you. Kilmeny Dukart with Newsmax. Um, I'd like to ask you about the fentanyl crisis, but I have a, a political question first, if you'd be so kind. As you know, the Republican National Committee censured two of your fellow conference members, Representative Cheney and Kinzinger. A number of Republican congressional leadership, including in the upper chamber, have criticized this action, saying it represents a form of shooting inside the tent uh, and the kind of backwards-looking politics of grievance that Donald Trump embodies, rather than the forward-looking issues-based approach that most party officials agree will be necessary for the GOP to reclaim majorities in November. As a member of leadership yourself, what is your reaction to those censures? My reaction is the RNC has every right to take any action, and the position that I have is that you're ultimately held accountable to voters in your district, voters who you represent, and we're going to hear the feedback and the views of voters pretty quickly here this year. Thank Next question. And NBC. Secondly, yeah. Oh, you want a fentanyl, fentanyl question? Yes. Sure. Yes. Um, what are you hearing from your Democratic colleagues about why they're blocking this bill? Is there a failure to acknowledge that there's a crisis even at the southern border? I'm going to let the ranking member of ENC, who is uh, responsible for that, I'm going to turn over to Kathy. Okay. Okay. Well, clearly, everyone is recognizing that we have a crisis in America as it relates to fentanyl. And it is estimated that there's enough fentanyl in the United States now to kill every single person seven times over. What's happening on the southern border is that the fentanyl, they, they changed the, the recipe a little bit. It's called fentanyl analogs. And there's an emergency order that was put in place over two years ago now so that the DEA could actually take action. The Democrats acknowledge that we have we have a crisis around fentanyl. They'll acknowledge the 100,000 that have died now of overdoses. They'll acknowledge that we need to take action. They are concerned about the mandatory minimums. So they're concerned about the traffickers, these drug dealers, being subjected to mandatory minimums. And they're so concerned about that that they are resisting, and so far they have blocked our efforts to permanently to permanently schedule the, the fentanyl analogs. We are calling upon them to take action. And, and uh, as Brett noticed, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we can look at reforming the justice system. That's a larger issue within the Judiciary Committee. What we've called for is the permanent scheduling as well as the research that the administration would like to see happen around fentanyl, but we need to take action. Because every day, there's another story of someone that is dying due to a fentanyl, a pill that they don't even know what they're taking. Great. Other questions? Leanne. I have two questions on two different topics, if you can entertain them. The first is, do you think that uh, January 6th was legitimate political discourse, which the RNC said over the weekend? Um, as Republicans have been very clear, we condemn the violence on January 6th. We also condemn the violence on 2020 as um, uh, violent criminals attacked federal buildings, uh, including parts of Washington, D.C. So we have been clear in that condemnation. House Democrats did not condemn the violence that happened all of 2020. Uh, and we believe the January 6th commission is uh, political theater. It's about punishing partisan opponents and not getting to the real facts, which should be how can we ensure that the Capitol complex is safe, not only for those of us who work 
work here, but for the American people to come continue to advocate for policies they believe in. Second question. Let's, on a follow-up real quick, do you think that that position is problematic heading into a midterm election where Republicans are looking quite good at um, again, our position has been very clear. We condemned the violence on January 6th, just like we condemned the violence that happened all throughout 2020. That's what's different than our Democrat colleagues who refused to condemn the violence that happened in 2020. When it comes to heading into the midterms, on the issues that matter to the American people, whether it's the border crisis, whether it's the crime crisis, crime numbers skyrocketing in states all across America, including my home district, whether it's the economic challenges, we are going to continue talking about those issues and er working to earn the support to earn back the majority. Yes, go ahead. Madam Chair, uh, thank you. Just a follow up um, with respect to the RNC. Does the conference have any plans to take additional actions against Congresswoman Cheney or Kinzinger? I know some members would like to see them expelled out of the party. Uh, it did not come up today in our conference meeting. Yes, sir. Eric Rosales from EWTN, the Catholic Channel. I had a quick question. Um, several pro-life organizations are concerned about the Biden administration because he's not able to get his pro-abortion agenda done quickly enough that he may use executive orders such as possibly putting clinics on federal lands which would not make uh, state regulation. What, what exactly is the Republican Party doing to continue to stop President Biden and his pro-abortion agenda? Well, first, when it comes to any spending bill, we are uh, only going to negotiate if there's continued protection for the Hyde provision, this historically bipartisan provision. When it comes to executive overreach that President Biden is considering, uh, that's something that Republicans would oppose adamantly, and we would speak out uh, very significantly on that issue. Thank you very much. We do not support unionizing on the Hill. Thank you.